Right, that's enough of that. We are going to kick off with our keynote speaker. Um, I am absolutely delighted to present um, someone who really needs no introduction, so I don't think I need to give him one. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for James Munns. Um, but welcome, everyone. It is incredible to see this full room of people interested in embedded Rust. Um, yeah, welcome. It has been an incredible couple of months uh, putting this together and seeing the huge amount of interest and the number of people who were immediately without question, without detail provided us. We said, we think we're going to run an embedded Rust conference. And everyone went, yes, I'll have one of those. So it has been an excellent experience since we first announced it. Um, so I guess, who am I? Um, I'm James. People on IRC probably know who I am, but I'm a a person who also wears many hats. Um, I'm part of the embedded working group with a number of the other people out here in the audience. Um, oh, well, yeah, that's a good version of our logo. Um, <laughs> but uh, part of the embedded working group. Um, I'm also a part of Ferris Systems, the consultancy uh, Florian mentioned, and uh, part of the organizing crew for Oxidize, today's conference in embedded Rust. So yesterday we had what I think at the time was the highest concentration of embedded Rust programmers in one place at one time. Um, we had 50 workshop participants all working actively for a full day on embedded systems from a beginner course teaching them their first steps in application development in embedded Rust to an advanced course where they were learning driver development to the RTFM workshop where they were learning to build highly concurrent applications. So, um, yesterday was a record smashing 50 people in the same building at the same time working on embedded Rust. And uh, today we've smashed that with about 100 conference attendees. So now I believe today you are all record holders in the highest concentration of embedded Rust programmers in one place at one time. So looking back at the last couple years, I've been involved with embedded Rust for two, two and a half years now. And since 2015 when Rust had its 1.0, that was kind of the point at which Rust said, we're very serious about this now, and we now have a stable compiler. And that's really when I felt Rust as an overall project really started taking off in the companies that were using it, the people that were involved with it. Um, finally, the first thing to celebrate after all the hard work in the run-up up to that. 2018, Rust had another milestone. There was the 1.32 1 release of that, which means the 32nd successful release over a six week, uh, every six weeks for that entire period. Uh, the 2018 edition was, was the first kind of major change to Rust in a little bit. And um, at the beginning of 2018, the embedded working group was formed. So um, there was a desire from the upstream project to really support embedded systems as a first class uh, feature. And the core team reached out to Jorge, who said, all right, I can find some people and put together a handful of us to start working on making embedded systems uh, a little bit better in the Rust ecosystem. Um, by the end of 2018, we had a stable version for embedded Rust. So we had Cortex-M support merged into the upstream Rust project, making uh, Cortex-M the first stable guaranteed embedded platform in Rust. So a pretty productive year, 2018. Um, so 2018 really was, for embedded systems, the 1.0 version of Rust. We had the first version of the compiler that we could really believe was stable, and we could begin writing embedded applications that wouldn't break every six weeks, or every nightly, really, to be honest. Um, so 2018 was as big of a milestone for embedded Rust as 2015 was for the Rust project as a whole. So where are we as a community in 2019, early 2019, still the first half? Um, well, the embedded working group has grown beyond the four or five people that were initially there. We're now 29 developers in 13 d teams spanning everywhere from Berlin to New Zealand. So we, I think we've got all of the time zones covered. But um, this group has grown incredibly over the last year and is a wonderful collection of people to work with on some really challenging stuff. Um, we're a growing community. I think the fact that there are 100 people in this room really speaks to the fact that we could get 100 people in the room in Germany on very short notice and who are all interested. So the community as a whole of the people who are using and developing embedded Rust has been growing incredibly over the last year and even more incredibly over the last three to six months or so since we've had our stable release. 
And not just the community is actively using this. Commercial usage over the last six months has really blown up on the number of companies who said, oh, it's stable now? Great, yeah, we can start taking a look at that. So with both my embedded working group hat and my Ferris Systems hat, we've been hearing more and more companies evaluating it for their first evaluation or saying, yep, we're ready to start shipping things in embedded Rust, which is uh, <laughs> a hugely wonderful thing to see. And today, as a community, we have Oxidize Conf, so the first embedded Rust conference. And I am just, you have no idea how wonderful it is to see everyone here in the same room. So I have uh, only a couple slides left, but the question is, where do we go from here? Where from the stable 1.0 release to um, what we have in store for the next year or two? Well, I don't have a, a magic eight ball, unfortunately. But what I'd love to see is in 2019 and beyond, a 1.0 embedded Rust ecosystem. So it's possible to write stable Rust applications today. But in the same way that the upstream Rust project between 2015 and 2018 really grew in terms of documentation, in terms of the quality of the, the code that is out there and the number of people that are really working and actively maintaining that, sys that ecosystem. I would love to see over the next year or two embedded Rust also catch up on that level in terms of the number of libraries that are there, the number of people working and the amount of documentation that's written. But I have a, a spoiler. It's not super up to me what embedded Rust is going to do in the next uh, couple years. It's up to you. It's up to the embedded working group people in the room, not in the room, and all of the community members who are in the room. Because really, over the last six months, Embedded Rust has gotten to the point where it is no longer just a small collection of experts working on it. It is a collection of people actively using it for their projects, personal and professional. And the, the Embedded Rust ecosystem has just grown so much, it is no longer at the point where a small group of people really can maintain it. It takes the entire ecosystem working on it. So I do have two requests. One of, uh, one of my favorite speakers is Adam Savage from Mythbusters fame. But he has a, a whole manifesto to makers, which is uh, his group of people who are really building things. And I've distilled it down to my favorite two. Um, and the first of those requests is to build tools. If you see something that needs build, or you have something that would scratch your personal itch, go out and build it. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect on the first time. Go out and build it and share it with the, the rest of the ecosystem. Because I guarantee you someone else out there will be excited and was saying, yes, that was exactly what I needed, or I didn't even know that I needed that. Whether it's an 8-bit retro computer emulator, or whether it's any building block in the, the ecosystem. So be the people that go out and build the tools that you need, because other people probably need them too. And my second request is to tell stories. When you build things, when you find a cool project, when you have done something, you went, wow, I can't believe that worked. Or I can't believe that didn't work, and I'm glad it didn't. Uh, um, go out and tell people about it, whether that means tweeting about it, whether that means blogging about it, whether it means sharing it with the Embedded Working Group's newsletter. We would love to show off your projects, because we are at a point where this ecosystem is growing so quickly you will find someone that your project does inspire. And that is so important to the community. So thank you so much to all of you, our attendees, for being here, for waking up sort of early on a Saturday. Um, our organizers, the very small organization team that has helped to put this together on a very short notice. Um, our speakers, who are willing to fly into Berlin on uh, to speak about this wonderful topic and the all of the sponsors that Florian mentioned this morning. So, once more, thank you all so much, and I'm so excited to see you here.